Hello and welcome to the Good Boy Podcast, the podcast where we celebrate, discuss, interview, talk about all things dog. And I am joined with a, a special guest uh, this week, um, Ashley Kilos. How's it going? Yeah, close enough. Yeah, man, good, good. How are you? Um, good. So what's uh, kind of interesting about this is so, you know, I'm new into podcasting you know, as a creator. And so I posted this in a Facebook group that I'm in and you said you wanted to record an episode. Like I didn't even, I wasn't even looking for anyone to record with and you said you wanted to do it. (laughs) And I was, I was shocked, but uh, excited. Um, So I'm from, I'm near San Francisco and you are, um, you said you're near Liverpool Yeah, so it's funny. <laughs> I'm not actually from Liverpool. I don't live in Liverpool. I live next door to Liverpool in a place called the Wirral. Uh, the reason I have to say that is anybody from Liverpool, and if they, anybody from Liverpool hears this, they would hate the fact that I did say I was from Liverpool because uh, they go, you're not from Liverpool, you're from the Wirral. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing they do is like, yeah, they try and attack you for so it. <laughs> very territorial, right? It is. It's, it's all a joke. Okay, like, it's all gotcha. a joke. It's, it's not an... Yeah, you have to go, oh, don't even pretend you're from Liverpool. You're like, well, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it, it, yeah, it's been a bit of rivalry between the two, well, between the city and the and the borough. So, I'm from a place called um, the Wirral, and it's pretty much of a dump <laughs> for, the, for the most part. But there are some nice areas, and, you know, I'm happy to say that I'm from one of the nicer areas in the, in the Wirral as well. So. That's cool. So, I'm excited to re- be recording an international episode. Definitely did not expect this uh this early on in my in the in the show um but so i i posted i believe it was the second episode the one i talked about my dog dewey and you said that you recently had um a dog pass away and that kind of i guess you want to go into that yeah i mean so i think you posted on the 7th uh, of april that one was a saturday i think it was uh, when you posted it and my dog passed away on the on the sixth the day before. I think it was I know I think it was around on the seventh or the eighth when you posted. But yeah, my dog passed away the day before. Um I'm just gonna warn you now, guys, that I might break down crying part way through this episode. Fingers crossed I don't, but I might. Um yeah, so like and as soon as I seen like your post on on the Facebook, uh, the face on Facebook, I was like, well, I, I, do you know what I'd love to tell people, like, you know, about the life of my dog? And I'd love to tell people about, you know, how happy she made me and my family and, you know, how, how a death, though, it is, you know, life changing and how it's, you know, it's, it's ruined me for a while and, and all that. Like, it's brought the family closer together. And, you know, I'd like to reassure people as well, like, you know, over certain things that they might have going through their mind and they, they have to make the decision to, you know, say goodbye to the, the you know, the animal. And it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because yeah. the reason, like the one of the main reasons I, I said I'd, I'd do it is possibly therapy for me as well, because so I've spoken to people about it. I, 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 I thought like, well, speaking to, you know, somebody who have never really met before or somebody you know, in depth about what I've been through and the, you know, the life and how happy she made me, it might make me feel a lot better. So yeah, that's another reason yeah, why I'm doing no, it definitely. as well. Definitely. Like, um, I haven't, I've recorded, but I haven't posted the episode yet, but I have an episode where I talk about, uh, with, with my dad about our, our family's childhood dog. So this dog was like, uh, mm. three or four years older than me. So like I had it, you know, uh, like I literally grew up with the dog, so um, you know, dog, dogs are part of the family. Uh, so let's just go ahead and mm-hmm. um, so, what was your dog's name and like what type of dog and just kind of like yeah, well. sto- like um, like so oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to. I don't let you talk. So, no, it's okay. So my dog was a Doberman. Um, she was like the life and soul of me, basically. Uh, her name was Saskia, like her full name was Saskia now, but we all called her Sassy. Like, uh, the reason we called her 
Sask- Saskia was because um, my younger brother, he's autistic. Um, he's such a nice lad. One of the, he, he's great. I absolutely love my little brother to bits. And when he was very young, we got Saskia. Um, and we didn't know what to call the dog when we first got him. What do we call the dog? <laughs> and um, my little brother, he found out that my sister was supposed to be called Saskia. Which she was called. He was like, well, obviously, Natasha, who is my sister, was supposed to be called Saskia. Why don't we call the dog Saskia? And we were like, that makes perfect sense. So for the longest time, we called Saskia. Um, and in the end, he was like, well, to, to just call her Sassy. So every time from... You know, when she was about three months old, four months old, and from then onwards, it was sassy, sassy, sassy. She's a brown Doberman. She was the runt of the litter as well. Um, and I remember, like, so the reason we got her was because we got burgled. Um, now, I went to Florida in 2007, like, you know, as every British person does when they go to America. The first place to go is Disneyland oh, and, really? <laughs> and all those different places. And all. Yeah, yeah, man. And um, when we went, it was, you know, it was like a really good time. This is obviously pre pre sassy, and you know, it was great. And we and we we got all the memories, and we had like all sorts. It was just when the PS3 had only just come out in England as well. I remember this, um, and I was one of those idiots who paid through the roof for it. Um, and I, when we come back to to England, we were like, okay, we've got all these memories. We had like a brand new, when it was state of the art HD video camera. Um, and it filmed on, I think it filmed on tape. I can't remember. I know it must have been, yeah, it must have been a memory card. Anyway, and then we had all like brand new, like you know, digital cameras before the dawn of proper cell phones yeah. or mobile phones yeah. with you know decent cameras on them. And you know, I remember one day it was well two three weeks after we come back from America. You know, we hadn't had a chance to look at all our photos and you know sit down and look at the videos and, you know, play all the memories back from what we did. Um, and I remember playing the PS3 on a standard definition TV at the time. Uh, I know. Uh, it was a rear projection, bleed, see, or whatever it was. Um, and then I was going to go to bed and I was like, oh, do you know what? I fancy watching a film. So I grabbed my PS3 from downstairs, brought it up to my bedroom with me and then watched the film and I went to sleep. And then the next morning we woke up Oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. The next morning, I get woke up by my mum. Ashley, Ashley, get up. And I'm like, what's up? And I find out that um, we've been burgled. Like, almost everything we had was stolen. Like, we had an oh, Xbox 360 okay. yeah, that was, I was taken. Say, I, I'm not, you, you mentioned before we started recording that there might be some um, language uh, slight variation. So, bagel, yeah. basically, you are you were robbed, right? Like, Someone had broken into yeah, your we house robbed. and had stolen a bunch of your stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, so we were robbed. We we had, I don't know. The, the video camera went on. We had all our videos on from America, from when we went to and visit Florida. Um, luckily, so up, so our digital camera got stolen. But luckily, the day before or a couple of days before, I transferred all the pictures from the digital camera to my PS3. So we still had those photos, which was, you know, great, but we had no video. Um, I think money got stolen as well. Um, DVD players, literally all sorts, like almost everything was you know, robbed from us. Um, and then when we came downstairs, it's funny. We, so my stepdad used to drive a Jag, a Jaguar. And we came downstairs and I, I looked out the window. So we were like, why is the car running? And then we realized the guy who came into our house, he went, the reason he, 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 he burgled us, Stole everything, put it in our put it in our car, drove off, dropped it all off, and then drove the car back and left it there with the engine running. So we were very, very, very annoyed at all this. And then my stepdad turned around and said, "Well, let's get a dog." And I was like, "Oh, you can't be bothered." And I didn't used to like dogs until Sassy came along. Yeah. So 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 you you go on this great vacation holiday. Um, and then you come back and then just in the middle of the night, someone had broken in, stolen your stuff. Like that was like, you had just gotten back like within a week or a few days. Yeah. Jeez, that's, that's, uh, it might've been. Yeah, it was, 
it's a uh, it was pretty pretty shocking. It was like I think we were back about like I don't know. I think we were back about I think it was three weeks something like that, and then it just. You know, it just, it, it, yeah, I think, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay, sorry, the, the network connection came, went down on my side. Yeah, so like, yeah, we were burgled and it must have been three, four weeks after we came back home and, you know, I, I used to be an electrician when I was younger. So I installed the alarm in the house. I installed the actual burglar alarm in the house and, um, for a week this alarm kept on going off and off and off and I was like, my mum and my stepdad were saying, why, why is the alarm going off? You must have done it wrong. I was like, I haven't, I haven't, I've done it right. And then my stepdad went downstairs and then when he, when he went downstairs for the last time, he forgot to put the alarm back on and went back to bed. And obviously that's when the guy struck. Um, so when we made the decision to get sassy, like, um, I didn't want a dog. It's like, well, I don't like dogs. I don't really like animals. They don't bother me that much. Like, I think the cues and I think, all that, but you know, she wasn't my dog. She wasn't my pet. I didn't didn't want her. And then when we got her, like she was cute and she was adorable. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this dog. She was just fantastic. Um, so, um, but I didn't have the connection. Oh yeah, Sorry, I was go just gonna on. say. So, um, did you go to like a animal shelter or like a you bought it from like a breeder or how how'd you how did you get uh, sassy? <laughs> So, I only found this out the other, well, last week, actually, to be fair. <laughs> um, so, um, my stepbrother w- was in the Navy. And when he was uh, about to pass out, when he was about to graduate in the Navy and make him into the, the ships and do whatever he had to do in the Navy, um, my stepdad and my mum found a breeder online and they found... Um, somebody selling Doberman and my stepdad was like, yeah, that's the dog we're getting. We're going to go down. We're going to look at the dogs and we're going to see which one we want. We're going to take one. We're going to bring her home. And my mum was like, okay, well, you've got to walk her. You've got to do this, that, and the other. So they went down south. I live up north, by, like I said, by Liverpool. They went down south, uh, Plymouth or Portsmouth. I can't remember where. Um, someone, I'm sure someone in the Navy will correct me if they hear it. <laughs> and... They went into this house. Now, I've been told horror stories of this house. It stunk, apparently. <laughs> um, the dogs weren't, yeah, well, the dogs weren't very well looked after. Um, the, you know, those parrots, there was poo everywhere. There was, you know, and it wasn't a nice place to be, apparently. And so you didn't, you, you when they you went in, go, uh, did you go in person? No, 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 I wasn't there. I was, uh, where was I? I was, I think I was working. Like, I was just, I, I was an electrician at the time and, you know, training to be an electrician. I was an apprentice, so I, I couldn't really get the time off work. And I, I just, I was at home and, like I said, I didn't even yeah, want so the dog. I was like, so you didn't really care. I don't want a dog. <laughs> no, not at all. Anyway, um, yeah, so they, my, my younger brother went with them. Like I said before, he's autistic, and I don't know if you have had many interactions with autistic people, but they don't have a filter, which is the funniest thing in the world sometimes. So he walks into this house, and the first thing he shouts out is, oh, my gosh, what the hell is going on in this house? It stinks like poop. And the people in the house just get really offended, and he's like, oh, oh, it stinks, it stinks. And my mom's, shut up, just shut up. We're going to pick up a dog, shut up, <laughs> giving her all this. I wasn't there, but I imagine it was hilarious. Um, and then there was a couple of dogs left and apparently we got the brunt of the litter as well. We got the smallest dog, the one who was, you know, the one who was just a bit quiet and the one who wasn't like, I don't know, being pushed out to one side. And so yeah, I thought we ended up getting it, you know, but I thought my mum brought so many. I remember this tiny little puppy with the biggest feet you've ever seen. Yeah. Like, these feet were just giant. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, when I got, when we got Mikey, he was nine months old, so he was mostly grown, but I definitely, that's like, I don't know, like, like, I'll mention this, and I'll say it, like, every episode, I am not a dog expert in any way, so anyone can feel free to correct me, but, like, I feel like their, their paws grow in, like, I don't know, like, pretty quickly, so it looks like they're, it almost looks like they're wearing, like, boots or something, like, like unnatural, right? <laughs> um, 
It's like when you see a clown with giant shoes yeah, it's on. Like it's like, what, what's going on there? Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, that was the first thing I noticed. Like, so Dobermans in England aren't allowed to get the ears cropped. It's illegal. I think, well, someone might correct me, but I'm 99% sure it's illegal to cut a dog's tail and trim their ears. Um, so she had floppy ears as well. Um, and she was brown. Like, most people see a Doberman. They see a black Doberman. Yeah. She was brown. And I wasn't expecting this. I was like, what is this dog? This is not a Doberman. What, what is this? I was expecting it to be, like, bulky and stocky and being like, and all that. But she just wasn't. She was daft. And she was a little, little, just a little cute ball of skin. and Because she was, oh, her skin was hanging off her as well when she turned off. Like, she was walking and her skin was winking. I was like, what, what is this? Like, it's not a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what's going on? Um, so, but, yeah, she was just there. Uh, yeah, she was, she was How awesome. How was she when you guys got her? Oh, I don't know how old she yeah, was. Like a few months? She couldn't have been. Yeah, maybe. She was She was walking. She she, she was very, uh, she she was aware. Like, she knew what was going on. She was definitely, she was at least a few months okay. old. And we only paid, we only paid £500 for it. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, anybody who knows dogs and who knows Doberman knows that they go for, like, up to two, £3,000, those breed of dogs in England. Oh, wow. Um so I know that and that we we did something good by taking her because apparently like the people who were going in to buy the dogs were not the nicest people. Um so we sort of saved her. I you know, looking back we did anyway, from possibly you know, I don't want to judge people, but you never know. Like, you know, from going to potentially a bad owner, like they weren't being vetted. They were not being vetted yeah. at all. Yeah. They were just like there you go, it's a dog, take it, £500, £500. And, you know, when my mum went down there, she was really concerned about the well-being of the dogs and stuff like that. And she's not even an animal person, mum. She can't stand animals, which is the weirdest thing. <laughs> um, okay. But, yeah, like, so we did by taking it. Yeah, so, like, how old were you um, when you when you got sassy? Oh, okay. Oh, how old was I? Our... I would have been 18. I was 18 when we got it. 18? Yeah, I must have been eight, 17 or 18 when we got it. So I remember I wasn't long into my apprenticeship as an electrician when we got it. Um, oh, hang on. Let me have a think. I was. I was 18 because I remember being in America and somebody said to my mum when we were having something to eat, here you go, here's the menu for you, and here's the alcohol, and for the for the younger ones, and I'm like, whoa, I'm 18, in England I can uh, drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, gotta, we gotta wait. So it was, yeah, like, we gotta wait. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so we, I was 18. So, so you're like, I don't really care about dogs, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just, you're just doing your own thing, you're working, doing all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, So, so, like, you you said you thought she was cute. Like, did you instantly like this is like, like what was your like kind of instant reaction like when the dog was like brought home? So my instant reaction was this is like the cutest dog in the world, and I saw her as more like a trophy dog. If you know what I mean, she was like more, like cute, she is, like gorgeous, she is, and she's really like she she is like you know a stereotypical puppy. But I never had a bond with her like straight away and. I didn't really get one straight away. Um, I got the bond when she went to the vet to get spayed. Um, and when she got spayed and she was poorly, like I think she had an injections or she was spayed. I, can't, I think it was when she was spayed. When she was poorly in her bed, like I couldn't help but just feel like this strong connection to try and like pick her up and give her a hug and go, it's going to be all okay. It's going to be, it's going to be fine. Um, and I could see in her eyes when she was just a little puppy, like, what's happening? And I was like, you don't know what's happening. And I, I just felt like this weird bond with her that I just wanted to sort of take away all the pain. And I wanted to just give her a hug and let her know that I'd be there. And I sat with her for hours, hours and hours and hours and hours and didn't move. And just stroked her and she, and she loved it. And ever since then, like that day, Sassy and I were like inseparable. That was the day that like we brought us together. So we must have had that for about a month before I really got an attachment to her. Um and like we just never looked back. We were just the best of mates ever since then. So after this kind of like turning point, 
did you start like, okay, I'm going to walk her. I'm going to, you know, take her to the park. I'm going to feed her. Like, did you, mm-hmm. did you like start jumping on all those responsibilities? Yeah. So like originally the plan was my stepdad, who was the one who wanted Sassy in the first place, um, would be the one in charge of all that. And he was, he was in charge of all that for the longest time. Um, but as time went on, like, like you were saying just then, after that, that one day, I was like, I want to see you happy and I want to see you run around and have fun and, you know, chase squirrels and, you know, um, you know, I want to see, uh, I want, I want to feed you. I want to give you tidbits. I want to be, you know, sorry, tidbits, like, um, do you know, what, like just little scraps of food. Okay. I want to give you, uh, I want, I want to be the guy to sort of spoil you and let you just do whatever you want and, you know, the, the, the adults in the house, they'll be the ones who'll scold you, but I'll be like, you know, the guy to sort of give you a hug at the end of the day and, you know, let you do naughty things around the house and just have, have fun. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we were lucky with Sassy because she never chewed anything. She didn't chew oh, wow. anything at all. So the remote control, yeah, none. But what she would do instead, which to this day baffles my mind, <coughs> excuse me, is she used to eat socks, <laughs> whole socks, swallow them whole, uh, or knickers or underwear. She like, funny. I'd be like, what? I know, man, but she'd poo it out whole. Jeez. So, like, yes. <laughs> you'd be, like, in the middle of the street with a poo bag <laughs> on your hand, pulling a sock out of a bum, and you're like, this is embarrassing, what are you doing? In the middle of broad daylight, yeah, when, like, I, you know, seen, and this is not cool. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I guess, kind of, like, picking up the poo is, like, that's, like, the worst part, I mean, at least for me, uh, about having mm-hmm. a dog. Especially, like, it's one thing cleaning it up in your own backyard, at your own house. But when you're on the street in the neighborhood, like you don't want someone to get mad. Um, yeah. Like yeah, so I couldn't imagine the whole sock. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, my dog Mikey, he eats cardboard, so sometimes like there, I forget what it was. He ate something like a, some cardboard, and you could see yeah. like, the barcode from whatever like food thing it was. <laughs> like it, it went through his digestive system like intact. Um, and then do do yeah, he, my I mean, do he steals socks, but he just holds them. He doesn't eat them. So <laughs> yeah, that's, I know, man. The funny dogs are funny, aren't they? Yeah. So um, so you kind of like it takes us a little bit, but then you kind of have like this like like great connection, and then like, do you think like she favored you, or did she have like any favorites in the house? Oh, I was 100% the favourite. Like, everyone called her my shadow. Like, she would just literally follow me everywhere. Like, I am telling you, everywhere. Like, I, I, I couldn't go anywhere with a hotel being right next to me, being beside me. Um, you know, in the morning when I'd wake up, she'd be outside my door waiting for me to get out of bed. Like, me and Sassy were the best of friends. Like, completely the best of friends. Like, I'd so look forward to, like taking her for a walk and, you know, going to the woods or going to the beach or, you know, um, you know, to the park or anything like that. Like she had free reign of my life and, you know, I don't regret any second of spending any time with her whatsoever because she made me so happy and it was just, it was the best. I mean, the best way to look at it is this. I went to university for a year. So before I went to university, she was a little terror. She was just be so naughty. She would, do all sorts. When I come back, um, or when I'd come home and, um, you know, see the family or whatever, she just slowly but surely become like a different dog, but in a good way, not in a bad way. She's still like, she was still sassy, but she would be far better behaved and, you know, she would, you know, do as she was told more often. And I ended up getting, um, the flu really bad when I was in university. And at the time in England, there was an epidemic going around of, I think it was swine flu or bird flu. I think it was swine yeah. flu. Yeah, it was swine flu. That was an epidemic going around in England. And the nurses in the university halls were like, look, you can't stay here. You've got to go home. Just in case it is swine flu, you've got to go home. So my mum picked me up. Luckily, my went to quite a local university. Um, it was only like, well, it was Liverpool Hope University. It was only like a 40-minute drive from my house. So my mum comes, picked me up with my stepdad, got me home. 
And when I got home, everyone was like, do not let Sassy know Ashley is home. Just don't let her know. She can't know he's home. So I'm in bed and I'm just like doing my thing, just being bored and sick. And I, and then I cough. And then as soon as I make this big loud cough, all you hear is like dun, 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 running up the stairs like a big giraffe and then crying outside my room and like, let me in, let me in. I was like, oh God, Sassy knows I'm here. And for the whole time that I was sick, she was just in bed with me, like just making sure I was feeling better and like, constantly giving me cuddles and like kissing me and making sure I was okay. And she knew I was sick. Like she knew it wasn't very well, even though she was, I don't know, nine months old, a year, something like that. Um, she just, I don't know, she must have been about two at this point. And she actually yeah, just knew I was like sick and she just constantly cuddled up to me. So yeah, she was, uh, she was, she was there for me then as well. And you know, she literally was my shadow everywhere that, I went. That, that's, that's super interesting that she like, so do you think she like was like, was she misbehaving because you were gone or was it, you know, just, I don't know. She had, uh, she was just a bundle of energy. Our dog, Mikey was kind of mis He, you know, he would misbehave a lot. And I, I know, I noticed that it was usually like he needed to go for a walk or he needed to play or something. Cause he just had too much pent up energy. So what do you, what, what do you think? Like, so the reason she was naughty was because, because like I was saying before, before I went away, <laughs> before I went away, like she would get away with bloody murder. Like she oh, would get okay. away with all sorts. Of and I, I let her be naughty because I thought it was cute. Obviously I was doing the wrong thing. Um, and then like she, so for example of her being naughty would be like when you'd go for a walk, she would chase cars or she would, um, like run up to young kids and start barking oh, at them, no. like trying to play. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? She she thought she was fine. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, Or she would, like, chase after people on bikes and try and, like, bite the feet. But she wouldn't, like, try and do it hard. She would just, like, play with me, play with me, play with me. And then I thought it was funny and, like, I just let her get away with it. And then when I come back, she was a different dog. Like, my mum and my stepdad whipped her into shape. She went into this table. Whatever it did, whatever it did, it worked. And, um... You know, she was a happy dog anyway, so she was, you know, it, it didn't bother her in the end that she couldn't chase kids or she couldn't, you know, do anything because she was quite happy with it. And then when I got home for like the week or so when I was sick, she straight back into it, naughty, completely naughty the whole time. And she's like, oh, here's Ashley. He lets me get away with all sorts. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. she, uh, she learns again the hard way. Dogs are like super interesting in that way. Like, uh, we had this toy that, um, and it, it had we it had the name little buddy because it said it on it but uh mikey loved it and like even like he like completely shredded it but there would just be like the skin of it left it was just like a stuffed animal kind of thing and we would bring it out every once in a while and he would remember it and like kind of like just go back into that same like behavior like like you know like so that that's 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 interesting that she'd be like, okay, Ashley's here. I'm going to go back to the way it used to be. Yeah. Uh, I must have been stuffed, Teddy. <laughs> so are the, let me just ask you, are there any other, like, like if if there's, like, the sassy story or any, like, this story completely, like, defines her, do you have any of those that, like, come to your head? <sighs> I've got a – do you know what? I've got quite a, I've got quite a few, like, small stories – I sort of paint a good picture of what type of dog she was like. So before we went to university, so um, in England we cook a roast dinner every Sunday. Like it's 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 it's, it's a general tradition that English people do cook a roast dinner. So it'll have like your, your meat, your potatoes, it'll have your gravy, it'll have your veggies, it'll have all that on it, um, and Yorkshire puddings. Got to have Yorkshire puddings. Um, and we, my mother cooked. The uh, roast dinner, and we were all really full. And we were like, "Ugh, let's go and sit down, and watch TV for a bit before we have any dessert." And there was a I can't remember if it was a chocolate cake or a sticky toffee pudding. I can't remember. Anyway, one of the two. I think it was a chocolate cake. And she bought it in. It was like one of our favorite chocolate cake. I can't remember the brand now. We were just sitting there, just like watching TV, and then all of a sudden, you just see Sassy wandering. I'm like, "What the hell is that in your face? Why have you got?" Why is your face black? What, what's going on? 
So I woke up and I'm like, you stink of chocolate. What's, what is this? We run into the kitchen. Everybody runs into the kitchen. And she finished the whole cake. The whole cake was just gone. And we were like, what's going on? What, what, how have you eaten this cake? But bear in mind, at this point, we were so used to it being like a small puppy that like, you know, she, we, we, we just put things on the kitchen side and she wouldn't, she wouldn't be able to reach it. But at this point, she'd grown up big enough to jump up onto the side and like pull it down and eat it. So she ate all the chocolate cake. She wasn't sick and she was completely fine. And like, which is weird for dogs, yeah. I know that. Uh, yeah, she was completely fine over that. Another one would be, so we used to have like this. Uh, a, a, a garden, like, like a garden in America, you call it a yard, but you had a garden. And it was the same size like a football pitch, like a soccer pitch. Um, it was pretty, it was huge, like I had a really big garden. For England, that's massive. Um, and she would constantly, constantly, constantly just look out the window nonstop, either in the front of the house or the back of the house. She'd look out the window for anything that you'd just see, and she'd, she'd just be, like, growling away at the window for, like, any sort of squirrels walking by. She'd be, like, just like, constantly on alert, making sure nobody was, like, getting into the house because Dobermen are very loyal dogs, and it's, like, the most kind-hearted dogs you'll ever meet. But if they don't know you, they will be like, what's going on? Who are you? Where have you come from? Why are you here? And they'll be like probing and trying to find out what's going on. They'll be growling and they'll be barking. But if they, if you come in with a person, they'd be like, oh, this is a normal person. No one needs to know. But like squirrels, she used to hate squirrels. I don't know if she hated them or loved them, but either way, like there was something and she hated cats. Um, and then she'd just be looking out the window constantly for any animals. And then one day, um, she's just barking and barking and barking. And what is going on? Like, what? This is like the middle of the night. It's like, what's going on? So I wake up. Because, like, I wake up and go downstairs. I'm like, what are you barking at, Sassy? Like, really? What the hell are you barking at? I open the back door, and there's this hedgehog the size of, like, a rugby ball or, like, an American football. <laughs> just a huge hedgehog. And she's just rrr, 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 barking at this dog, uh, this, this, this hedgehog. And every time she's barking, she keeps poking her nose on the, the, the bristles. I'd be going, oh, oh, barking, oh, bite, barking away, poking her nose, barking away, poking. And she just didn't learn. Um, a more recent one would be as well, like, this is, a, this is a funny one. So, I don't know, this must have only been about four months ago. No, about six months ago. Um, like, so we ended up moving to like a smaller house in like a nicer area, but like a smaller house. And I was taking her for like a, a, an evening wee before bed. She wouldn't do it in the yard. She'd always, she, she, she'd have to go around the street. Um, so we were going for like a last wee and I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm not going to bother putting a lead on it or, you know, she doesn't need, or sorry, a leash, a lead or a leash. Uh, didn't need a lead. She'll just stand next to me. She's fine. She's a really well behaved dog and she'd just trot along next to me and she wouldn't be bothered. And then this cat just came out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere. And she just clocks eyes at this cat. And she's about to go for it. Now, at the exact same time as this, there's a couple at the back end of my house, like behind my house is like another set of houses. There's a couple like having this huge argument. There's a guy in his, in, in his window screaming at a woman going, yeah, I don't know what they're saying. And I can hear it like around the corner. I'm like, what's my, this is like, that's a nice area. Why are people like having screaming like arguments in the, in the, uh, in the streets? And this woman's going like, you just are and swearing and you know saying all sorts and they're just really laying into each other. And Sassy locks eyes with the cat and she just makes a beeline for this cat, runs past like runs up to this cat and Sassy, get here now. She runs like through four gardens, through four front gardens, jumping over fences, jumping over walls, chasing this cat. And this cat is just running for his dear life and she crashes into this woman who's sitting there screaming at her husband or whoever it is. She crashes, this woman goes flying on the floor. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And she's like, it doesn't matter. That idea upstairs is kicking me off. And the guy upstairs is laughing his head off. <laughs> laughing his head. He's oh, laughing, wow. screaming at this woman. Going, she's, she's giving her this. And I was like, I am sorry. I have no, I am really sorry. And Sassy's just wagging her tail. Like, look at me. I just chased the cat and knocked the person over. Look at me. And I'm like, no, you're actually quite annoying right now. <laughs> that's that's um, hilarious. Yeah. Um. So she was just. Uh, yeah. So was she like super obedient, like well trained, like because uh, like you know, some of our dogs that they're kind of do 
play by their own rules sometimes, you know, and, uh, like, they they know the commands, but they kind of choose not to listen to. So how how was uh, she with that? Um, she was really good, like unbelievable. I think Doberman are bred to be like that. Um, so the Doberman comes from like a number of different dogs. I think it's like what have they got? They got like um, the, that's I can't remember. They got quite a few different breeds in them. Anyway, one being Rottweiler, hence the colour is on them. And it's a German dog. Um, it's a German dog that comes from a tax collector and he bred it to be loyal and obedient, but at the same time, very protective. And you can really see that. So if you said to her, sit, she would just sit instantly. You say to her, like, Damn, she would lie down instantly. Give me your paw. She would give you her paw. Now, she'd always want to treat at the end yeah, of this, yeah, of but course. she would do it. You, you got to get paid for <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Uh, and, but... Though she was like really obedient in front of you, behind your back, she was sneaky. Like, for example, she would. So when we moved to our newest house, my mother was. My mum would like be the last one to go to bed. She always has trouble sleeping. Um, she can sleep through anything when she's asleep, but she always finds it quite difficult to go to sleep in the first place. Um, so my mum would be like the last person to go to bed. So. I'd talk sassy in and then my mum would make sure she's like she'd say good night and then we'd all go to bed and then we'd go upstairs and now sassy wasn't allowed. Well she was allowed all right, like she was allowed everywhere, but in the living room she wasn't allowed on like this rug that we've got. We've got like a laminate floor every like sorry, wooden floor and laminate laminate floor everywhere, but in the living room we had a like a really expensive we've got like a really expensive rug. Okay. She wasn't allowed on this rug. Apart from when my mum would go to bed, she'd get out of bed and then lie on this rug just because she knew she wasn't allowed to do it. <laughs> so she'd crawl and lie on this rug. And my mum was like, why does this rug smell of dog? Like, she's not allowed on the rug. Why? And then one day, my mum went upstairs and then waited and looked and she could hear her getting out of bed and creeping into the living room to lie on this rug. And now, Sassy had a, a memory foam mattress and the bunk bed. So she didn't keep lying on this rug. She did it because she just wanted to be naughty. She's like, I'm going to stay in it. No one's going to tell me otherwise. So, yeah, she'd do stuff like that. Or, um, like, she'd con. Oh, here's one for you. So when she was a puppy, <laughs> we were talking about this today. Um, when, we were, when she was a puppy, we had, like, this uh, bin or trash, trash can, this bin in our old house that you'd, like, wave your hand over the centre and the lid would open so you didn't, like, your hands yeah. dirty or anything like that. She got smart enough and tall enough to realise if she waved her nose over the bin, the lid would pop up and she could just stuff her face with all the stuff from, from the rubbish. So I remember like she'd just sneak off in the middle of the day. We'd be watching TV or whatever. She'd just get up, wander off, and then come back in and lie down. And be like, why did she smell like she's been eating? Like there's no food anywhere. Like what? And then like one day one of us like, I'm going to follow Sassy. So we would creep behind her and then we followed her into the kitchen and then she'd just see that wave her nose over this this the sensor and then the lid would pop off and she just eats but woo, face first into the bin all the food she could eat all the, all the leftover chicken and chicken bones and like meat and yeah. veg and gravy and she's like it's all mine and chocolate but blah and she'd go nuts for it but she'd try and like not make a mess as well so she'd know she'd left the mess she'd leak it all off the floor yeah. and she'd like, what are you doing screamed at her um, another thing that she'd do which <clears throat> actually came back to really its ugly head on me one day was if she didn't feel like she had enough walk, she'd go, I'm not coming home. No, I'm, I'm staying in the park. <laughs> this is my day. Uh, I, 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 she'd always get like a good walk, especially when my mum would take her. My mum, like, she'd take her for a, a really long walk and she's she taken out literally every day. You could probably count on one hand the time she didn't go out. Like, she just, she was out all the time. Um, and then one of, my, one of my ex-girlfriends, so I ended up moving out and living with one of my ex-girlfriends for a bit. And she was like, I'll take Sassy for a walk for you. I was like, are you sure? Because I was in a mad rush to get to a male the job at the time. She said, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll take her out. She's lovely. She, she loves me. I was like, great, fantastic. I'm in work, like, as a teacher at this point. Um, I'm in work and I get a phone call. I'm like, what does she want? What's up? And she goes, your dog won't come back. I'm like, what do you mean? Sassy won't come back. She just won't. She's, she's just not coming back for the lead. I'm like, ah, how long have you been out for? And she goes, I've been out for like an hour. 
It's like, yeah, sometimes she doesn't like to come back after an hour. <laughs> she wants to stay out for longer. It's like, I've got to go to work. I'm like, just leave her in the park. I'll be back soon. Because I know what she's like. She'd either follow her back or she'd just find somewhere to sit and just chill out oh, until wow, I turned that, up. That's crazy. Uh, she'd be like, yeah, I'm just going to wait here. However, it started raining, obviously, like England does. One day, one minute, it could be sunny, and the next minute, it is literally bucketing down. So I'm um, like, it's raining. I'm like, oh, shit. God, I can't get sassy now. It's raining. Oh, I must feel so bad. So I ran to the park. There was nowhere to be found. I was like, where's dog? Where's dog? I... And then some guy poked his head out the window. He's like, you shot him for the dog? I was like, yeah. He goes, the big brown one? I'm like, yeah, that's my dog. Where's she gone? He's like, oh, the pound's taking it. I'm like, thank God for that. Like, I know where to get her now anyway. So I ended up getting her. I had to pay 50 pounds to get her off the pound. But, um... Yeah, it's like at least she was safe, but like you know, she she was very obedient. But there was the odd time when she'd go, "Not today, guys. I'm not, I'm an old woman. I can do what I want. So you ain't gonna tell me anything, boy." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She was a, she was a little character about her. She was she was nuts. And like, it's just oh, the, the, if I tell you what you said before, what is like the the one thing that defines sassy? You want like a, a sassy story? It's not really a story, and I sort of alluded to it before. She hated squirrels. Like, she couldn't stand them. And you could be like, so I used to go to this place called Royden Park. It was a favourite place. Huge, huge park. And it had massive fields you could run through. It had woods. It had rocks. You could go literally everywhere. There was, like, fishing ponds. It was massive, this park. And I'd be out there for a good two hours, like, just walking around, and she'd just have the, have the best time. And you could be, like, on one side, and you'd stop, she'd stop. And she just, you'd, you'd, you'd see her ears just pull back and she'd be like, what is that noise? And she'd just look at me and I'd go, where's the squirrels? Where's the squirrel sass? And she'd just look at me and start growling and then I'd go, go get them. And she'd just bail. She'd run as fast as she could. And she was like a rocket when she was younger. An absolute rocket. And then you'd hear her go, <laughs> like she'd barking away, like this really deep bark and she could see her getting really excited and she'd always fall over and she'd always like try and jump up and climb up trees and she couldn't climb up trees, obviously. Um, but yeah, she was absolutely nuts. Like, she'd just go ballistic chasing other dogs and other squirrels and stuff like that. She was just full of life. Absolutely full of life. So, like, how was she around other dogs? Did she play with them or did she not care? Or mm. So, she was... Oh, it depends. I think, so, as a rule of thumb, she was quite um, aggressive, but not as a sort of the same voice. Well, not in like an aggressive way, but like more like a, I'm a big, big, loud dog. Please play with me in a really big, big, loud way. Um, like she'd bark and she'd like go into like a pouncing position and a tail would be wagging all, and she'd be growling and like a teeth would be showing. But I know that that's her that's playing. playing. Yeah. Now in it, yeah, in, in England, I don't, I don't know what's like in America, but in England, like, are people who own big dogs accept that to be like, well, that's a big dog and that's how they play? A lot of them do anyway, like, and they know it can get a look, it can look, I think it was when you were picking up your second dog, you sort of had a bit yeah. of, um, a bit of like, oh gosh, I don't know if, if he should be coming, but that's how, like, my dog played with all the other dogs and people were like, yeah, that, that's totally fine, just leave them to it. And they'd be playing, and like there'd be times when they cut each other, but you could see they were all having, having fun. Like they were playing, they were wagging. It was never like malicious, and they'd always like at the end be like walking over next to each other, like sniffing each other's bones, and you know, have like they didn't want to leave each other. They had like a really good time, and you know, sometimes it maybe did get out of hand, but you know, they are animals at the end of the day. Um, and she'd never ever ever bitten another dog. She'd never like. She was never nasty towards anything that was alive. She was always like the kind hearted. She, don't get me wrong, the older she got, the less time she had for the dog. She's like, I can't be bothered. I just want to do me walk. I just want to like chase me tennis ball. And then by the end of it, it was like, I just want to walk. I don't even want to chase me tennis ball. I'm quite happy just being out. Um, and like, she was, you know, she was, she was great around other dogs. She, she, she was. It was smaller dogs that really didn't agree with her. Like, so smaller dogs would be yapping away at her face and she'd just stand there looking at them like, what are you doing? Yeah. Please don't bark at my face. You're just getting right in my face. And you're giving me a headache, go away. And she'd just ignore them, completely ignore smaller dogs. But big dogs, she absolutely love. Um, until 
it's an um, a multi poo. It's like a it's a lovely cute dog, but it's not a big dog. It's a tiny thing. But they used to get on really well, like Sassy and um, Lady Coco, the sister dog's called. Um, they used to get on really well as well. Um, but yeah, and you know. She just, she, she really enjoyed playing. She was just a full of energy and life. And when it came to having fun, she just didn't stop. She always, always wants to have fun. Even when she was really old, she just wants to play and just have a laugh. So, yeah, it was her round of a dog. So, like, you had her for a number of years where you're like, I, I see why people like dogs. Like, did you, did you kind of have like a realization like that? Or was that like, like you, it seems like you turned around on dogs, obviously, but like, did you ever like stop and think about it? Like, man, like now I really see why dogs are like, why people love them or why people feel so attached to them. Mm -hmm. Was there like a moment where that like, yeah. Yeah. I think it was. So I used to, and I used to suffer with like anxiety and depression and used to like, you know, it still sort of affects me now, but I know I can cope with it and I know like good coping mechanisms and I can sort of, you know, I, I understand how to, get over it and sort of be quite, you know, level-headed over a lot of things now and don't let things get to me. But a long time ago, I was basically a, a bag of a nervous wreck. I, was, I, just, I couldn't do anything all the time. And, you know, I was very outgoing, but at times I, I couldn't cope. And um, one day, like, I remember just sitting there with Sassy and just giving her a big, big cuddle. And, like, it felt like life was just awful until I gave her, like, a big hug. And I was like, hang on, this thing that... You know, doesn't understand the word that I'm saying other than dinner, sit, and lie down. Like, has unconditional love for me, no matter what. So, like, more so than any person ever has, maybe apart from my mum. But, like, you know, this animal has just got so much love to give and why, how come people don't have that? And I was like, well, now I get it. Now I understand why people like dogs, because dogs are the best listeners, they're the best talkers, they're the best, you know, they're the best bit of therapy in the world. Well, you know, you can tell a dog anything, and they won't tell that to anyone. Yeah, exactly. Mainly because they don't understand. <laughs> but, like, you know, you feel like, you feel like it's just another person just being there just to, like, offload all your problems with, and then, you know, at the end of it, you can give them a big cuddle, and they know that you're unhappy. They know that you, you've got some problems there, and they know that, like, you know, oh, well, my master or my person or however they look at me, they need me right now and I want to be there for them. And, you know, she'd always be there to give me a kiss and she'd always be there to, like, I didn't mind a kiss on my face. It didn't bother me. She'd always be there to give me a cuddle. She'd always be there to, like, just just be there. And it, she just made me so happy. Like, nothing on this planet has ever made me as happy as she made me. Um, and right now there's, like, a huge gap in my life that, you know, sassy filled and nothing else could even come close to that right now. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do to sort of fill that gap, but, you know, this is, like you were saying before, like, you know, was there something that clicked? It wasn't like a sudden moment. It was one day I realized that as time had gone on, like, why the hell didn't I want a dog? Dogs are just like the best. And it sort of gave me appreciation for more than just dogs. It gave me appreciation for lots of other animals Except cats. I'm not a cat guy. I still don't like cats. <laughs> um, you know, she's just, she had a heart of gold and she had a lot of love to give and a lot of time to give, not just for me, but for the whole family. And she was just amazing. Like, she really was. Um, she just, you know, brought like such a, such a, I don't know, how do you put it? Yeah. She filled the gap I did, how I need. Feeling. Yeah, and I'm just like th thinking to my dogs, and I'm like, I can't like, I can get mad, but like, I'm mad for like two seconds if they do something because like, that's just who they are. Like, my dog Dewey, he's not the smartest dog. He's gonna jump on the counter all the time, <laughs> even though he's 12. He he'll still jump on the counter. He's still gonna bark, <laughs> but that's just who he is, and he's not gonna change in that way. And I just kind of have to just laugh it off, mm. like. He's just, he's just silly, you know, that's just him, like, he, he can't help it, you know, but, yeah, he, yeah. Well, oh, I, totally I, got I, it. I like what you said, like, has, like, they have so much, like, love to give, right? It's like, it's like, they're, it's always, it's like, 
no matter how dark you are, they're always like this shining light, right? And that can brighten you. Um, so, mm. so, uh, like, uh, if you don't mind me asking, did she just uh, suffer from old age, or was there some sort of like complication? So, oh, where do we start here? Okay, this is my. This is probably going to be where I'm going to start. Like, <laughs> I can feel a bit of a lump thought forming in my throat right now. So, um, so my sister got married in Mexico last year, um, and it was a really good time. Like, we had the best time ever. And the day, so a couple of weeks before we went to Mexico, like, so sorry, start this again. The build up to Mexico, we noticed that Sassy had like this smell coming out of it. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, and wax just kept on building up. And we're like, taking it to like two or three different vets. And we're like, what's going on? Like, you know, what is this? And one vet said it could be like a tumor. Another vet said it could just be like, you know, an infection and, you know, whatever. And we found out it was a tumor. It was a, it was a tumor. And we're like, oh my God. Right. So do like, what we're going to do is we're going to operate. We'll remove the canal. There's two canals in your ear. There's one where the sound goes in, and then there's another canal where it goes into your like eardrum. Um, and the, luckily enough, the tumor was in the first part of the ear in, in the canal, so they just basically took out that whole part of the ear and then sewed it together, and then made a new hole underneath it which you could hear. And we're like, oh, great. So basically, she had the tumor removed, which obviously a lot of the time tumors and cancers are pretty much the same thing. Um, and you know, she was fine. She was top of the world. Like I didn't, so I'd taken her to get the operation done the day I flew to Mexico, um, to see my sister. And I was distraught. I was like, oh, I want to see Sassy. I want to make sure she's okay. I remember crying my eyes out, driving to the airport. I was like, oh no. Um, and then my mum flew out a few days later and she had, the, she had a big cone on her neck and she didn't even need it because she knows when she's like had a cone. She's like, I don't touch whatever the cone stopped me from touching. I just don't. At this point, she was like nine. Was she nine? She was just about to turn 10. Yeah, she was just about to turn 10. Um, and yeah, because it was August last year, uh, or July last year. And, you know, when I came back from Mexico, I went to my stepbrother's house to pick Sassy up because she'd stayed in my stepbrother's while I was in Mexico. And um it was great. Like she was made up to see me. She didn't want to come back with me. Actually, the funny thing was, so <laughs> she didn't want to come back. She wanted to sleep in his because she, she had like a, she had like a really, she was living the life of luxury in that house better than we could even get there. She was living like sleeping on the couches, sleeping everywhere, doing what she wanted, really naughty, eating like people food. She had a great time there, and I was happy for her. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, um. And then time went on and she just started to show age and she started to get old and was like, Oof. like, she's not, but like, she's still the same dog. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, she's, she was still sassy. Like, she wasn't, her personality had never changed and she was just amazing. Um, and then it must have been a, when was it? I don't know. January, she had this recurring injury from the previous year, um, where her foot, her back foot, started to just really swell up and uh, uh, pain, and they were like, we don't know what it is, you've been for scans, and like, we can't really see much. They thought it was uh, cruciate ligament damage, which was going to cost us about three, four thousand pounds to get fixed, and we were like, oh god, but, you know, you pay it, don't you? Um when I put my foot down and said, look, it's not her knee, it's not her cruciate ligament, it's a foot. They found out, like, oh, she had a couple of broken toes in her, in her back right foot. And they're like, oh, here we go. Give her this medicine and give her this medicine um, and let her just rest up. This is in January now. Um, and she had Pardale, which is like a doggy version of paracetamol. And she had Metacam. Now, Metacam is like a dog version of ibuprofen or ibuprofen or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, basically just like an anti-inflammatory for dogs. And we gave it to her and she seemed to be in less pain. It was great. But then like day two come around and she started to have diarrhea and it was like getting extremely bad to the point where for four days she just constantly was going and going and going. I'd sleep downstairs for four days with her, like next to her bed and, 
every hour I was waking up and taking it out and it was literally like turning the tap on and you had to like throw you couldn't pick it up you had to throw like water yeah. on it because you know, obviously in the streets you could just leave big piles of mess on the floor so we had to take buckets of water out me at like three four or five in the morning to clean it all up um and then obviously we got all that sorted and we found out that she had colitis in the end because of the, the medicine so she starts getting a bit of pain and her foot wasn't getting any better i'm like what's going on like i don't understand what's going on this is january time and you know she was still a normal chip herself but she couldn't go for walks anymore she wasn't allowed to go for walks because her foot was so bad and she you take it out and she would just hobble on three legs and the other foot would just be in the air and you take it out like maybe twice a week and she was getting depressed. I was like, why are you feeling sick? It's like, it just killed me to see her like this. I was like, what's going on? I mean, she was only 10. I'm like, she's 10. She's still got like, what, five, six, seven years left and the dogs live to 15, don't they? Yeah. Um, this is what I thought. Well, some like, do. Um, yeah, some do. Um, and I was like, come on. Like speaking to her, saying, what's up? Just get better. You do me. I didn't get better. Um, and then she wasn't getting any better. I'm like, okay, well, what are we going to do? And she just kept on losing weight. And we're like, she's just, so she lost a load of, she lost a load of weight, uh, an absolute load of weight. Um, when she had diarrhea and she started to pull it back on after the diarrhea when we started feeding her back normal. And, you know, she was, she didn't eat for four days. Like you couldn't feed her. And she started eating again, and she seems to be getting a lot better in herself. And then it's like, okay, maybe we can take her for the odd walk now and again. And it was starting to get much better. It was great. And then um, we just noticed that she was starting to not eat her food. And we were like, why are you eating your food? We were like, oh, she must be in pain. Her foot must be that bad. She's not eating her food and, and all that. We were like, okay. Um, and then we noticed it was just getting progressively worse to the point where there'd be days like a whole day where she wouldn't eat and like this isn't sassy she's very food based like you know she loves her food she'll eat anything you give her so we ended up switching it from dry food to wet food and she'd eat that and I'm like oh cool okay great I'm like, what's going on so we're taking her back to vet i'm like look she's not eating what's going on and they were like let's have a look at the teeth oh her teeth there you go uh one of the teeth is uh looks like it needs removing so we'll remove one of the teeth I'm like great there we go fantastic so a couple of weeks later, she went back to the vet, had an operation to get a tooth out. Um, it was only about two months ago now. Um, had an operation to get one of the teeth out, like a biggest tooth um, that was pulled out and the mouth just wouldn't stop bleeding. And like, you've lost a load of weight. So at this point, she'd lost about, I don't know what this is in pounds, but she lost about... Five um okay so that's about like she's getting a bit skinny now how much did she weigh okay yes yeah that sounds about oh no she must have lost five kilos she's lost about three kilos this oh no yeah but about that now um she was how heavy was she she was 37 kilos at one point okay yeah so that yes yeah, okay. th- so that's about 81 pounds for anyone for any american people yeah Okay, wow. Um, and then, then she, that was like a normal weight, and then she started, she lost five kilos. And then she kept on just losing weight and losing weight, and we're like, what is going on? So she got a tooth out, and then as soon as she come back from the dentist, from the doggy dentist, bam, straight into the bowl, ate all the dinner, and we were like, yes, finally she's going to start eating again. Now, at this point, she wasn't going for walks. She couldn't do it. She was getting to a point where she was starting to go back again, but like, out of the seven days, she was going maybe once at Tops. And there's a bar around the corner from my house, which was dog friendly and still is actually. It's a dog friendly bar, which quite a lot of pubs in, like, are in, in England. Um, and I'll take her there instead. I was like, come on, we'll go to, we'll go to Marino Lounge and we'll go and have a burger and we're going to have a beer and we'll chill out and we'll just see other dogs. And she, she really, really, really enjoyed it there. It was a bit different for her. She loved the music. She loved all the people. She absolutely adored Bored it there, um, but she wasn't eating again, and I got to a point like, why is she not eating? Like, what is going on? And then, like, I noticed she started sneezing and sneezing and sneezing, and she wouldn't stop sneezing. I was like, why is she sneezing? When she was sneezing, blood kept on coming out of her nose. Like, what is this blood? I'm like, what's going on? Like, and you at that point is like, 
I think I knew about a month before. I was like, she's dying. Like in the back of my mind, like she's she's on her way out. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah. So so I, uh, just like like so during this like I don't know six month period or so. Did was it was it, it was three, three months. months? Okay. Was was, was yeah. that in like the back of your head? Like this, you know, this could be it. Like, or were you like she's gonna get better? Like, where where were oh, you? Oh, it was like so. It started in like January, really. So obviously, it obviously started in August, but we didn't know anything at that point. So we just thought tumor, it's gone. Now, I didn't realize there was anything really bad with it until about January. Um, like, yeah, January was when a foot started to play up, and then it got better, and then it got worse, and then her mouth got better, and then it got worse, and I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on. So it must have, so she got, she went to, she went to the vets for the last time on the 6th of April. Must have been about mid-February that, no, beginning of February, the thought started creeping into my mind of like, she hasn't got long, she hasn't got long left, like, I don't know how much longer we've got with that, do you know what I mean? Um, it, it, I, you know, I remember driving to um, the pub I was telling you about before, Marino Lounge, like a bar, a bar, like place you can get something to eat. Um, getting upset, like speaking to her, saying, "Look, are you dying on me? Like, don't, don't, don't be dying on me yet. Like, we've still got loads of things we need to do. Like, we've got holidays to go on to together, and you know, I still want to do this with you. I want to do that with you." And she's like, just looking at me, going, "Why are you making noises?" But <laughs> I'm like, you know, are you on your way? And I could just tell, like, I just, it just sort of knew. And then I'd taken her one day to the vet. That is like, look, she's sneezing loads. It's not getting any better. I think it must have been about a month. Yeah, being in a fair like, I just sort of knew. And then I got taken to the vet, and there was this Romanian vet, and he, he said to me, I remember he was Romanian, like, the, the coolest accent ever. He was, <laughs> he was like, uh, okay. Now, he was speaking to me very bluntly, and I'm quite—I like prefer to be told things like direct. You know, Sassy's not eating; she's had her mouth operated on, um, and it's—we're looking at. I'm looking at her right now, and I'm saying there could be something far worse than you're aware of right now. I was like, "Oh God, what's he going to say?" And he's like. Do you want me to tell you what's pointing it out to me? And I was like, what? And he goes, well, first off, the rapid weight loss. Like, the, the rapid weight loss. She just lost so much weight. Um, and he was like, there's two dimples on the top of her head that have gone in, like a concave. Um, it's concave that goes in, isn't it? Yeah, concave dimples on the top of her head, just above her eyes, where her, like a, a jaw, the jaw muscles normally go. Now, he said, they're very deep. Um, those two dimples in her head to me signify possibly cancer. And when he said that, I was like, what? Are you, are you for real? Like, what's going on? Like, I wasn't expecting this today. I said, what's the chances she's got? He goes, I don't know about doing tests. I, I can't tell you. He said, however, what we can do in the meantime is try and get her eating again. So what we'll do is we'll give her painkillers. Um, and we'll give her, you know, things for a joint to make a joint feel better. We'll do this, 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 and this. I'm like, I'll pay anything. You know, we didn't have insurance on it. We were like, I do not mind paying up anything. I'll pay, I'll do anything I can to make it feel better. And he was like, um, okay, no problem. Um, take these tablets. Hopefully she'll feel better. There's a hunger stimulant in there. Hopefully that'll make it feel better. And it didn't. It just, she just got worse and worse. And she wasn't eating tablets. She wasn't eating, um, she wasn't eating like treats. We'd give her like, you know, she moved onto a diet of fish, just plain, just fish, non-stop fish. And I'd never seen a coat looking so healthy, but you know, she wasn't eating. That's all she'd eat. And she wouldn't, you know, she, her coat was shiny. And I was like, wow, why didn't we start feeding you fish earlier? Um, cause it was all stuffed. So you know what I mean, she'd eat the fish cause it was soft. She couldn't eat dry food. She couldn't eat wet food. She would, uh, beef mince. She was eating mince as well. It's so like ground beef. Um, and she just got, progressively worse and then I remember just one day I was like come on Sassy let's go out and she just looked at me she's like I'm not getting off I was like hmm what's going on here 
like this is not sassy. Even if it's a wee, she'd get up and you could see she was getting thin. She was getting, she was wasting away. You could see her ribs. You could see a, a, a spine, like a jaw muscles. You could see like a, 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 sorry, a jawbone. Like, you know, the best way to describe it is you ever played Resident Evil? Yeah. Have you seen the dogs on Resident yeah. Evil? That's that's the same breed as Eden. That's what she looked like, except with flesh. It was it was horrifying by the end. Like, yeah, it's the only way you can describe yeah. it. So, did you uh, get to this point where it's like, eventually, where it's like, uh, like you know, do we got do we have to put her down? Like, not that like maybe like for her, you know, for her like finance financially is one thing, right? But another thing, it's like, you know, she she's obviously going through all this mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, so, two days before the last time she ever went to the vets, I said to my mum, "Was like she needs to go to the vets. We need to, we we need to know what is up with Sassy because we don't know. No, we, we, we it might be cancer, but we don't know." I take her and there's a girl there, a vet there called Katie, and like she's sort of been Sassy's main vet the whole time. She's just taken one look and then went, "She's got cancer. You can just tell." I was like, do you not need to do any tests? She went, no. She said, the two dimples in her head, the rapid weight loss, the weakness, like, she's, she's, she's going. Like, it's time to start saying goodbyes now. Um, and so I think that night I ended up, so I like to go to the gym. Like, uh, I'm not like, I do like to go to the gym and try. Where comes to make stuff better? And I was like, I'm going to the gym. Get my mind off things, try and think straight. I'll go to the gym. And I went to the gym. And I was like, right, I have to think about this now. And I couldn't think. I just went home. And then the next day comes along. So that was a Wednesday, Wednesday the fourth. Um, Thursday come along, and she just, she was just, I, just, I don't know. It was just a different dog. I was like, I don't. It's gone from literally last week where she could walk about and go for a walk and stuff. Today she's just in bed all day. Um, and then, you know, she did go off for a little bit in the day. And then she came home. She just went poof, straight back to bed. Didn't need to think. And I said to my mum, I was like, Mom, I'm going to stay downstairs with her tonight. I'm going to sleep next to next to Sassy. I'm going to make sure, like, I'm here for her if she needs me. She's like, yeah, no problem. And then um, I fell asleep next to her downstairs. And then... My mum goes to bed. Like I said, she couldn't sleep at some point. She goes to go to bed and she just like, she stands there and looks at me and I wake up because I just felt like someone was there. I woke up, I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, I can't sleep. Sassy's bad, isn't she? I said, yeah. So I, I woke Sassy up. I was like, Sassy, come on, we're going in the living room. And she's like, wow, we're not allowed near a bedtime. Um, and then I jumped in her bed with her, with my quilt and we just went to sleep that night. And then, the next morning, I just looked and I was like, it's time. It's time, it's time to say goodbye. Um, and it's, it came a lot quicker than I thought it needed to come. And it was one of the hardest decisions you've ever had to make. Um, but it had to be done. There's just literally, she was suffering. She couldn't get out of bed. She, I tried to I tried to drag her out of bed to go for a wee. I tried to feed her; she wouldn't eat. Um, like she just she, she was she was just a, a heap of like skin and bone in the bed. And I was like, I, I can't see this anymore. And if this is if this was me in her position and I had the choice, I would rather go. Um, and then I called up the vet. It's like they. We're expecting the phone call, I think. And the woman who, who works there looked behind the desk, Andrea, she was like, oh, how are you doing, Ashley? I was like, I think it's time for Sassy to come to the vets for the last time. And they were like, okay, no problem. So we booked it in for like the end of the day to give me time to say goodbye. The only slot they had for free was the end of the day. Um, and my stepdad come downstairs to go to work and he was like, "How?" he was like, how is she? And I was like, it's time camp, she's got to go. And I left him alone. Um, like I just went upstairs for an hour 
and just left him with Sassy. You could hear him sobbing his heart out and everyone was just so upset. And it was cancer that got her, really, more so than anything. And then I take her to the vet and um, I had to carry her. Like, it's, I haven't had to carry her for years. I had to carry her to my car and then drive... Sorry. No, no, no. It, like, I... Just to pause real a bit, you know, you messaged me right after I posted this and I, I hope yeah. you had enough time to, you know, process this and, you know, like, obviously, you know, death of anything is difficult, but no, you're doing yeah. good. No, I mean, it's funny because, like I was saying to you before, like, she's, a gap's gone that doesn't exist anymore now, other than memories and stuff like that. So, yeah, like, I mean, I suppose I'm just going to describe what happened. Like, you know, so for those who don't know, when you go to the vet to take your pets to go to sleep, um, it's actually quite a surreal feeling. Like, did you ever feel when you've ever taken your, so, your pets to be put to sleep? Um, it's been like a weirdly relieving slash distressing thing. So when when... I'll just exp- go over it quickly. Uh, last time I went was probably 2009, and uh, my oh. dad went, and I just stayed in the car, and I was just crying in the car. So I actually didn't go inside the vet. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, yeah, it's like it's weird because like you see, you know, it's coming, but it's like you know, like you don't want it to happen. You 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 know, five years ago, you you that never crosses your mind, right? You're just like, just be, it, mm-hmm. the, the animal just becomes part of your life, right? Like, okay, someone's got to walk it. Someone's got to feed it, you know? So, mm-hmm. so it, it, it really yeah. does like, uh, interrupt your life, right? Like my, my whole mm-hmm. schedule, my whole time, my, my, my functioning is changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh... It's it's a massive disruption, like you're saying. It's like one minute you're caring for this thing that just constantly craves your attention and constantly is just, you know, lives in the moment and lives to just be happy. And then the next minute, it's it's gone. It just, it doesn't have, it, you know, your, my reason to get up in the morning doesn't exist anymore. Um, so, like, for those who've never actually seen or, or been a part of, you know, having to put a dog down. It's like I was saying, and, and you know, like, it's weirdly like it's, it's peaceful. It's a very like peaceful and like serene moment, but at the same time, like super depressing. So, um, I brought her in, and because she had a tooth out weeks earlier. She still had like the shave on her arm. Like on her arms. Sorry, you you you're you're cutting like, out. So uh, a, sorry, you're cutting out. So her arm was shaved for sorry. an IV, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, they shaved her arm for an IV. Okay. Yeah, so because she only had a a, a, a two thumbs, because she had cancer. So yeah, they, they shave it for an IV, and it's literally just an injection of um, like this, what is it? I can't. My brain's gone now. Sorry. You know where the the sends you to sleep. The stuff that sends you to sleep. Um, I can't even think what it's called because of where my mind's at the moment. Um, the Basically, they get put to sleep, like an actual, just they go to sleep and then it's an overdose, which slowly shuts down each part of the body, like the heart stops and then they start breathing and then, you know, all stuff like that. And I remember like she was leaning on me um, and I was giving her a cuddle as she was going to sleep. And I felt, I didn't mean to do this, but like I had my hand underneath her right, her front right leg and I could feel a heartbeat just slowly taken away and then it just stopped. And I was like, have I done the right thing? And you start questioning yourself. You know you've done the right thing. And Sassy being Sassy, like, now and again, she'd 
poo in the house or she'd do something in the house or throw up or something, which I'm sure just to annoy us. She just did a massive wee <laughs> when she passed away. Like a huge wee all over the vet's floor. Um, and obviously she'd been holding it in all day because she didn't want to go in the house. And her eyes remained open. Like, the vet was saying, like, when she passes away, like, you'll, she'll slowly shut down and then her eyes will stay open. It can be quite distressing for some people, but I found it quite, I don't know, it was like, it was weirdly, I don't know, it's really hard to feel it. It's, it's a mixture of emotions at the same time. I don't know, it's like a stasis moment where time stands still and, um, the world just stops moving for a minute and all that matters is you're sitting there with the most important thing in the world and it's not there anymore. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, you know, my business partner, he gave me, he, he, I spoke to him and I was like, man, I cannot come to work like for a while. He's like, mate, take as much time off as you need. So that happened on the Friday. You know, I was supposed to be working the Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday, right, and the Monday. But I didn't go back into work until the Tuesday. And even then, I wasn't really ready for it because I broke down at work as well. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was mad. And it was WrestleMania weekend. So I went to go and watch WrestleMania on the Sunday. And the plan was to go and watch it. <laughs> Instead, I just got as drunk as I possibly could in, in, in Liverpool and got a taxi and went to bed because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, but, like, it's funny because the things that you miss are the things that you're taking for granted, like the sound of a tail, like, wagon in the morning when she'd hear you get up, or um, when I'd put my keys in the front door, she'd run straight to the front door, and you'd see her, like, a head poking through the window, or, like, a crying when she just wants to see her, or, like... I don't know, like all sorts of things and the sound of her food and the chain, like she, she wore a choker, like most, it's cruel to have a choker, but we, we got her a normal, well not cruel, like it's, it's everyone's opinion, whatever, uh, but like she really loved her choker, she loved it, it was like a bit of jewellery for her, made noise, like she, if we got her like normal collars and she always wanted a choker back on, always wanted it, so she had a metal chain around her neck and she just loved it, Look, she looked like a proper Doberman, like <laughs> put it that way, all she was missing was the spiky collar, Um and you just miss the things that you're taking for granted so much. Um, I remember the day she got put down. I went to the, the pub that we started going to all the time. And I told all the guys in there, like, who worked there. Well, I say guys, they're all girls. Every single one of them works as a girl. I told all the girls in there, like, you know, what's happened. And then they were all giving me hugs. And, you know, they were like, all oh, my beer that night was free. Um, and... There's a guy who I sort of made friends with in there. He brought his dog every day and he was consoling me. And, you know, she touched the lives of so many different people. Like, so today we went back to the, to the, to the, to the pub where I used to take her for like her wake. And it's, I don't, it might sound ridiculous having a wake for a dog, but we did. We went down there for a week today. Like me and my mum, my stepdad and my younger brother. My sister was supposed to be here, but she's in the army. Um, so she couldn't make it. Um, and we just had a couple of beers and we, you know, had some food and spoke about it all day. And she really did change the lives of everybody in the family. Like, it brought me and my mum. Her death brought me and my mum really close. And because up until that point, she just annoyed me. <laughs> like all mums do. She just annoyed me, but I don't know. Like... She taught me the value of love, do you know what I mean? And like loving other people and being involved in your family and making sure that like, you know, hold on to what you've got because one day they're not going to be there. Yeah. I mean, the, the dogs and, you know, maybe even animals in general, they teach us a lot about ourselves and each, each other and they don't even, they can't even talk with us. Like, you know, the dog wants to go, they want food, they want to play, they need to go outside that's basically all you know all they need but they really do like teach mm-hmm. us a lot about ourselves and yeah it's 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 crazy what you know this this animal can do um mm-hmm. so yeah um well you know like when we put my lost 
dog down. We got a dog like a couple days after, so it was kind of weird because yeah. you know you have all that excitement back. So, uh, do you want to get another dog? I mean, obviously, there's it's easy to want a dog, but you know, not everyone's life circumstances mm-hmm. are the best. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I want another dog. Like I know I do. I mean. It's not going to be a replacement for Sassy because she's my first real dog as well. Like, so before Sassy, we did have one other dog. I was very young when we had that and she ran away. Um, she was just a weird dog. She was a King Charles Spaniel. She just, I, she was just, I don't know, wants to, her name was Rosie and she just didn't really, I don't know, she was a weird dog. She ran away. Um, and I was upset. Don't get me wrong. I was upset when she ran away, but I was only a kid. I was only like, I don't know, seven. So I don't really remember any emotion towards it. Um, but I do want another dog um, and I probably will get another Doberman because of the positive experience that I've had with Sassy um, but I do plan on getting a rescue dog this time um, like get it from the shelter yeah. um, but I couldn't I can't get I, 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 my life right now doesn't dictate to me having a dog I've got too much on my plate um, the last year or so having Sassy, I've taken her out less and less because I've gone self-employed. Um, and, you know, when you're self-employed, you don't have time. You know, I all my time is spent working. And if it's not working, it's, you know, party because I need to party at the end of the week. Uh, you know, and it, 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 it's, it's, it sounds funny, but, like, you know, I'd always, 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 always make time for it. Like, my, my, me and my brother, we always be, be taking shifts and taking Sassy out. So he'd do so many days a week, I'd do so many days a week, and it'd all be fine. Like, it would be completely fine. And she'd always see me, and I remember coming home drunk. I remember once coming home drunk. I was on Mother's Day. Um, and me and my sister's boyfriend at the time um, went out and got super drunk. Like, we'd taken him off something to eat. Then me and him and I met up, and then we just got super drunk. I got a taxi home, realised I didn't have any keys to get in the house. So I'm like banging on the window. <laughs> and my sister, my sister pokes her head out the window going, what do you want? I'm like, let me in. She's like, Ugh. So you know, she's going to hear me because I banged on the window where Sassy was sleeping. She was barking away at me. <laughs> she's like running up and down. You can see her getting really excited. And I wake up the next day. I don't remember getting in. I wake up the next day, tucked up in bed with Sassy. It's my mum booting me, probably kicking me on the floor going, wake up, what are you doing? You're a mess. Go to bed. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, mom. I was like, did you have a good time, Sassy? Um, and then, like, even not that long ago, I remember I come home from, I'm obviously about like a year and a half ago, I come home from town. I come home from, like, a really, really messy night out. And I come back, and I'm lying, in, and I remember just waking up at, like, seven in the morning to my mom going, what are you doing in bed with the dog? I'm like, because it's comfy. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just, um, you know, it was great, man. Like, all the happy memories. Like, I get really upset thinking about, like, the way she's not here anymore and how much weight she lost. And all in all, she lost. That's how many she lost. 21 pounds before she passed away. Wow. Um, so, for a dog, that's quite heavy. Um, but, yeah, so, like, but you just got to think of the happy times. And that's why I wanted another dog, because... I realised having Sassy that I've got so much love to give to another animal. Like it'd be a shame if I didn't get one, but only when my chat my time dictates to me. Um, because of, like I've got a very precious little time right now, free time. Only when I get my own house because I'm saving up for a house now. I had money, I had savings for a house, but they've gone now and vet bills. <laughs> like you said, you pay, you don't mind paying because like well <laughs> the love I've got, well it, it, it's got to go or on the thing that I love the most. Um, and now it's 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 a weird it's weird to say that now she's gone I can save up for a house because that sounds like a positive thing but if in fact I'd rather stay living with my parents as long as I can say that's sassy as that's how much you can see me um, but you know it's time to get out because they're doing me editing. I can't wait to get out yeah. <laughs> Well, I I yeah. appreciate you spending your your evening. It's my afternoon. Uh, talking with me. I hope yeah. you know this helps. You know whether you you remembered a story or just helps you remember the good times. I I hope you uh, that recording this uh, helped you. So 
thanks so much for um offering and in, in coming through and uh recording yeah well man it's been my pleasure i mean i want people to know basically like when it's time it's time don't drag it out it's like you know it's time like this dog moves the world to me she meant more than like anything i could even describe um and putting your dog, I mean, this isn't for every single case. Sometimes you do need to go out your way, but sometimes you need to take a step back and be like, if I put this dog through any more tests or any more procedures, it's just going to make her quality of life worse. Exactly. Or his, um, and it's, you're actually doing more harm than good. You know, you could be being very selfish by keeping this dog alive. Um, when actually, you know, the right thing to do at the right time is to say goodbye and, you know, really spend time and thingy. One thing as well as like, don't take your time for any, with any animal for granted because that this past 10 years, it would have been 11 in August has gone by so fast, like so ridiculously fast. It's unbelievable. Like my life has changed so much, but the one constant throughout my, you know, grown up life, it's been sassy and um it might sound silly because you know it's always oh, only a dog but it's not like it might sound silly that i've got to try and figure ways of coping now without sassy but it, you've got to do it it's like it's like losing losing a loved yeah. one like she is a loved one she like you say but she's a family member and you know it's the most important person in my life is gone. That's, that's the, the worst thing. But don't ever like, you know, I'm just saying, don't take them for granted. You know, do spend as much time as you possibly can. But when they do pass away, don't kick yourself and don't think to yourself like, oh, I should have done this or I could have done that because dogs live in the moment and they are so happy to see you. Even if, you know, you had plans to do something grand with your dog and you didn't manage to do it, they don't know. Like they were happy anyway. Yeah. So don't beat yourself up over things. That's what I've been doing. Like I've been looking back and as time's gone on, I've gone, well, no, like I didn't do the things that I wanted to do with it. But that makes no odds because she was happy. She was very happy. And as long as they're happy, that's all that matters. So. Yeah. Well, uh, is there, I, you know, I'm going to keep mentioning this. Like this is kind of a weird podcast to kind of plug anything, but is there anything you want to plug or just say like, you know, you kind of had a good send off there. Just, Love your dog, like um, you know. Yeah, man, love your dog, like <laughs> you know, love your dog uh, because the dog loves you more than anything in the world. Like dogs don't have any other meaning in life than just to be alive, and that's a pretty sad thing. So while it's here, make it happy, like make it happy. That's all it wants to be is happy. I mean, plugs. I don't have any plugs. I don't do anything, but I do actually. To be fair, but it's quite, 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 I'm quite a private person. To be not, to be honest, uh, believe it or not, being on this show, um, uh, follow me on Facebook. Come be a be friend, Ashley Keelhouse. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, but Twitter, as I said before, nobody, nobody follows me on Twitter. I'm totally fine. I don't do much. I post like memes now and again, but that's about it. And pictures of my dog. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, and I guess. The other thing I would say is like if you think you can you ha if your life circumstances can allow you for have a dog, get one. They may fill a gap that you mm -hmm. didn't know you had. Uh mm -hmm. so yeah. Like so, uh, cool. Cool. Th thanks again for being on. Thanks for listening. Uh you can follow me at Ilya Alexif as just my name, or uh at the Good Boy Pod. I will try to on Facebook, Instagram, basically everything. This podcast is available everywhere I can put it. So uh, if you listen to it, thank you. And uh, keep petting those dogs. Yeah, man, keep petting those dogs. <laughs>